Hello and welcome back to another video in the Moodle course development series. I'm Joe Deegan and in this video you'll learn how you and your students can evaluate whether they've completed all requirements of a course. In the last video you learned how to track your students scores on each activity in a course. Now you're going to learn how to use the course completion feature in Moodle to determine what it takes to consider the course or series of courses complete. If your class has many activities or takes place over a long period of time, it can be difficult for your students to determine if they've done well enough on each of those activities to complete the class. And things can become even more complicated if your students are working on some kind of a certification that requires completion of several courses. Luckily, Moodle has the course and activity completion features that can make this much easier to manage for you and your students. So let's start by taking a look at an example of the course completion feature, then we'll cover how to set it up for your courses. So here's a course where I've already set up course completion and I added the course completion status block to the sidebar of the site. Since I'm logged in as the administrator or teacher of the course, I have the option here to view the course completion report so I can get an overview of how my students are doing. So I'll go ahead and click View Report, and then after clicking View Report, I'll be brought to this screen where I've got a nice overview of all my students in the class and how they're doing on each activity. So if they've completed the activity, then you'll see a check mark here like you see for the quizzes. But if they haven't completed it, then you'll see it blank like these two options here. Okay, so now let's go over how to set this up for your courses. When it comes to setting up course completion, there's three parts to the overall setup process. The first part is to enable the course completion feature for your Moodle site. The second part is to set up activity completion for each activity that you want to be considered as a requirement for course completion. And the third part is to set up course completion for each course that you want to use this feature for. We'll need to start with the first part of enabling course completion on the Moodle site before we can start setting up activity and course completion. So let's go ahead back to the site and we'll start setting it up. To enable course completion for the site, we'll need to go to the advanced option in the site administration. So I'll expand my site administration option. Then I'll go to advanced features. Okay, and then now that we're here in the advanced feature screen, we'll need to scroll way down and we are looking for this option here that says enable completion tracking. And you'll want to make sure you have a check mark here. As you can see, I already have it because I've already set it up. But uh, by default, you won't. So you'll need to check here and then you can go down and click Save Changes to enable it for the site. Okay, now that we've enabled completion tracking for this site, we'll have the options available to configure completion tracking for each course and activity. So let's start by enabling it for a course where I haven't already set it up. Okay, now that I'm in a course where I haven't already set up completion tracking, I can go down to the Edit Settings option under Course Administration, and then from here in the Edit Course Settings page, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we've got the Student Progress section. And by default, it's set to disabled, but we'll want to enable it so we can start setting up completion tracking. And I usually leave this option at the default. And then we'll scroll down and click Save Changes. Okay, now that we've enabled completion tracking, we'll have this new option here in our settings page called completion tracking. And this is what we'll use to set it up. So I'll go ahead and click on that now. Okay, and starting at the top, you have the option for the aggregation method, which you'll want to leave set to all in most cases. And then the next step is to set up any course prerequisites. So if you wanted to track completion towards a certification of a series of courses, then this is where you would need to select the other courses to include. However, in order for the courses to appear here, you'll also need to set up course completion for those first. So these courses you see here have already had completion tracking set up on them, and that's why I can select them as prerequisites. So I'll go ahead and select them both as prerequisites just for this test. And then if we scroll down, we have our manual completion options here. And the manual completion options are used if you want students to have to confirm that they completed the course by manually clicking on an option. Or you can use these options so that the teacher has to manually indicate that the student has completed the course. And if you want completion to be indicated automatically based off of the student's scores on activities, then you can skip the manual options and scroll down to the activities completed option. And this section is used to indicate which activities you want to include as requirements for completion. And as you can see here, all I have is the quiz. So if I wanted any of the other activities on the course to also be included, I'll need to go back and set them up for activity completion. Or if you don't have any activities listed here when you go to it on your Moodle site, then that means you need to go back to the course site and set up activity completion. So I'll go ahead and do that now so that we can set those options. So let me go back to the course site. Okay, and to set up activity completion, we'll need to turn editing on so we can access the settings for the activity. Okay, and I've already got the quiz set up for activity completion. How about we go ahead and set up the lesson also, so that the lesson also has to count towards completion. So I'll go ahead and click the edit icon for the lesson, and then we'll scroll all the way down to this activity completion settings. And you can see by default it said do not indicate activity completion, but we will want to change that to either students can manually mark the activity as completed, 
or since we want completion to be automatically calculated, we'll use show activity as complete when conditions are met. So I'll select that. And then you also have some more options here to base completion off of. You can base completion off of them viewing it or whether they have a grade. I want to make sure they have a grade. So I'll go ahead and select that option. And you can also set a due date. And now that I have my option set, I'll go ahead and click save and return to course. Okay, now that we have the lesson set up for completion tracking, I can go back to the completion tracking option and include that as part of the requirements for the course, for the course completion. Okay, so I'll scroll down to activities completed, and you can see I already had the quiz there, but now I also have the lesson. So I'll select lesson, and we'll leave the aggregation method as all. And now I've got the lesson selected to base completion off of. We've also got options to base completion off of a date or a final course grade. So if you want to base completion off of the student's overall final score in the class, you can enter that score here in the grade section. So we'll say that they need to have a minimum final score of 70% so that the student won't be considered complete with the course until they have a grade on the lesson, the quiz, and an overall final score of 70%. And then we can scroll down and click Save Changes, and we'll have completion tracking set up. But there's still one more thing we'll need to do so we can view reports about completion. We'll need to add the course completion status block to the course site. So I'll go ahead and I already have editing on. And then I'll need to go down to my Add a Block block, and I'll look for the Course Completion Status option. So I'll select Course Completion Status to add it to the side of my site. And what this will do is give me the option so I can view the report that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Okay, and it's already been added. So now that I've added the Course Completion Status block, I have the View Course Report option. And as you can see, it has all the students, it has all the prerequisite courses, the activities, and then the overall activity completion. And as you can see, a few of my students have already completed the quiz and the lesson. They've got check marks here. So now let's take a look at how the course completion status block will look for students by changing my role to a student. Okay, now that I'm logged in as a student, if I look at the course completion status block, it gives me a nice summary of the activities I completed and what's left to be completed before I can be considered done with the course. And this is a great way to make your course more user-friendly, making it clear what needs to be done before the course is completed. And that's it for setting up course completion. Okay, time for a little practice. Go ahead and set up the course completion feature for your course or a series of courses if you're working on some kind of a certification program. Also, make sure to configure the activity completion conditions for different types of activities so you can get a better feel for how course completion works. In this video, you learned how you and your students can evaluate their progress towards completion with the course completion feature. In the next section, we'll talk about how to see even more details about students' participation with activity reports. That's it for now, and we'll see you in the next video.